This doesn't quite make sense, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to compare the Surface Pro with the iPad Pro. Pro versus Pro. They both have the Pro monikers. They both aspire to be two types of devices, a laptop, computer, and a tablet. The reason why it doesn't make sense and it sort of does make sense is one is clearly a tablet and the other one is clearly-ish a laptop, but they tend to try and blur the lines where the iPad Pro says it's your next computer, whereas the Surface Pro says it is a two-in-one tablet PC. There's clearly a divide between the two devices, but there's also an overlap as well. They're both pro in terms of they're trying to evoke that extra premium using it for real work feeling. Whether that's true or not is another story, and I'm going to look at that a little bit further. I'll take a look at four separate components, battery life, gaming, pen performance, and finally, programming and software development performance. The next part I wanna talk about is the battery life. I did a battery test between the two, running VLC, playing a movie off of a network drive. Both of them had their volume off with the brightness matched between the two and roughly an hour and a half worth of playing. While they both started at 100%, the iPad Pro ended at 93%, whereas the Surface Pro ended at 55%. So quite a bit of drop right there for the Surface Pro. Right after playing the movie over the network drive, I went onto YouTube on both devices and played 20 minutes off of a video from there. After 20 minutes, the iPad Pro went down to 91% from 93%, and the Surface Pro went down from 55% to 41%, so quite a big drop in there. And I made sure to check that there weren't any updates happening, any indexing, any, any extra applications running in the background on the Surface Pro. Having said that, it was my typical setup for the device and not much was going on. And it was still a dramatic decrease of battery compared to the iPad Pro. So that was quite an interesting, uh, interesting test. So for gaming, I installed Fortnite on both devices, connecting it with an Xbox One controller and just playing it for a couple of minutes just to see how it behaves. I found that on the iPad Pro, it was actually a pretty smooth experience, although compared to like a real gaming PC, the textures were a little bit more toned down, but it still played at the full resolution of the iPad Pro. Meanwhile, on the Surface Pro, I found that the performance was really bad out of the gate. The application did a detection of settings and it put it on high, so I said, let's go with it, and it was pretty bad. Even though the resolution was toned down, it was really choppy and there was a lot of stuttering while I guess it was loading in textures and it wasn't a good experience. I toned down the settings right down to low and at that point it was playable and smooth but there's still a little bit of jittering and stuttering and again I think it's just loading in the textures and assets from, from the disk onto the GPU. And speaking of GPU, I think this is where the Surface Pro has a disadvantage compared to the iPad Pro. The Surface Pro has an Intel Iris GPU, so it's more of an integrated graphics solution. It's not really meant for 3D gaming, but it can do it in a pinch if you tone down everything and just turn down the settings. The Windows machine is also at a disadvantage because developers can especially let's say Epic Games can build an optimized build for the iOS and iPadOS devices. That gives it an uh, advantage just because they're building towards a single hardware profile. Whereas something like a Windows 10, Epic is building it for an entire slew, an entire ecosystem of devices. So you can't really target that one single device. And that's where the 
iPad has an advantage over the Surface Pro. So another interesting part about the gaming test was that the fan actually kicked on on the Core i7 Surface Pro 7. It does have an active cooling solution and one of the byproducts is that the fan will kick up if there's a thermal load on the CPU. Which leads me to another point too, is that it did get a little bit warm with the Surface Pro 7 and I've had bad luck with the Surface Pro 4 where it failed over time and that could be because of the thermal load that it took over time and eventually something of the, maybe the GPU failed. That's just a hypothesis. No way for me to test that without opening the device. I'm not gonna do that. Let's talk about pen note taking next. I felt like the battery life on the Surface Pro 7 led me to not trust it for using it in that scenario. In that if I have it on and I'm using it throughout the day, there's a potential that it can just die. It can just like run down to 10% and I'd have to run and charge it. Which never was a problem with the iPad Pro. I can use it throughout the day and I would still have enough juice for even the next day. The, the iPad OS is also more in tune for using it in that scenario. It's a lot easier to just turn on the device and go right into the application and not worry about closing and minimizing things or putting in the tablet mode or any of those things. I can just already open the device and go right into the app and start taking notes. And it's a little bit subjective, but I also found that the Apple Pencil had a nicer feel in the hands and also a nicer feel on the screen. I'm not using a screen protector on either devices and the plastic on glass feel of the iPad, the Apple Pencil felt a lot nicer than the Microsoft Stylus and on its screen. And if we look at both of them, we can see that there's a little bit of a difference in size already. The iPad, the Apple Pencil is a little bit longer, but it's almost one piece. Whereas the Surface Stylus has a button in the back, there's a button in the side, and then a pen nib that you can take on and off. And there's a little bit of give on the tip of the pen, which gives it a more, feels like a bouncier experience when I'm writing on the Surface Pro on the Microsoft Stylus. This almost feels like a carpenter's pencil. It's like very sturdy one piece there, which gives it, I feel like a more satisfying writing experience. Now there, it's still secondary to something like pen and paper, but the Apple Pencil comes fairly close to that pen and paper experience. I mean, by close, maybe 30% of the way there. So I'm, st I'm still trying to replace my paper notes with one of these devices and I haven't gotten there yet. I've been dabbling mostly on the iPad Pro and I think it's the closest to getting me into a fully digital note taking experience, but there's something about paper on pen that I just can't give up yet. Just being able to turn the pages to see my progress in the notebook. I'm not quite there yet with digital note taking because of that. Now the pen withdrawing, I'm totally unqualified to speak on that, but I'm going to do it anyway. I feel like the iPad Pro has a better drawing experience in that I could just get into the application and just draw it at a very casual level. Whereas on the Microsoft Surface Pro, I have to launch the app, put it into full screen mode, possibly put it into tablet mode, and then work with that. I'm not saying that is not doable, but that little bit of friction there makes it just that much harder to get into it, which makes me just want to pick up the easier solution, which is the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro also has some cool tools for note taking and drawing. It has OneNote, which is available on both devices, but it has things like Notability, Procreate, and those have been highly revered in the artist community from what I've heard. Take it from me, a guy who can't draw or is not really an artist, but you know, 
One of the reasons why the iPad Pro seems to be easier for me is that the operating system doesn't get in my way. iOS just allows me to get into it and just start drawing. There's no minimize, maximize, full screen, tablet mode buttons or anything like that. I'm just right in the application doing what I need to do. So the next category is really not a fair comparison at all. And that is coding, programming, computer science type work. There are ways to get a programming experience, but you'll definitely need another computer to do the actual work. Whereas the iPad Pro is more or less just a window into the actual computer. The Surface Pro, the Surface Pro is a full fledged laptop with a full fledged operating system on there. So you'll be able to do everything you would on a workstation that you would do on the Pro Surface Pro device. Yeah, so with the Surface Pro, I wouldn't have any trouble running web development, game development, and just general programming stuff on the device. You can access WSL2, which gives you access to all the Linux tool chains. So if you want, you can just experiment with Linux or just work in Linux. It even allows you to work with Docker now, so you can run a web server in a Dockerized container. All those applications are just right there for you. So it's kind of an unfair comparison. It's kind of a silly one, but just take that in mind if you think you're gonna buy an iPad Pro and get any programming work done on that. Not that it's not possible if you do something like SSH, VNC, or remote desktop into another machine, but directly on it, you're gonna come up with a lot of barriers. So where the iPad Pro is kind of converging in on something like the Surface Pro is that it does have a USB-C port, which allows me to connect to an external drive. It has Bluetooth capability, which allows me to connect to an external keyboard. And it also allows me to connect to an external mouse. So you can set it up in such a way that it mimics sort of a laptop experience. They both are able to connect to external displays, but the iPad Pro will give you like a little black bars at the side when you connect it to there, where the Surface Pro acts pretty much like any normal computer and you can extend your display onto like another 4K display. Works perfectly well that way. So in conclusion, completely weird comparison. The iPad Pro is really a pro level tablet in that it will allow you to do tablet stuff to the next level. So considering drawing, media consumption, video editing, things that you can consider being done on a tablet that already exists can be done on the iPad Pro. Where it's not pro is your typical computer science, computer geek type of programming work. It's just not really something you can do on that device. However, on the other hand, the Surface Pro is a pro-ish laptop. Mine came with Microsoft Home, weird. But you can do programming, you can run full uh, Adobe software on there, Premiere, Resolve, all that can be run on there. So in that aspect, it is a pro device. But if you wanna use it as a tablet, full-time or near full-time, you're gonna see a lot of frustration as the battery will just start draining and you're gonna to have to babysit it, maybe carry an external battery pack like people have suggested, but it's just not a really satisfying tablet computer experience. But as far as the form factor goes, I really love the thin and light form factor for the power that's in that machine and for the price. If I was to spec something similar on the Mac side of things, let's looking at like a MacBook Pro 13 inch or 16 inch is completely different price range for the core i7 model that I have here. So why would you buy an iPad Pro? If you're looking to do something like drawing, note taking, photo editing, video editing, and you wanna do it on a tablet, the iPad Pro is that device. Why would you want to buy a Surface Pro? If you require a full computer that can do all the things that the tablet can do, but can actually do things like programming and software development tasks, then the 
Surface Pro 7 is the machine for you. But don't expect it to be a great tablet because of all the things I mentioned. So that's my weird comparison of the two devices. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to comment. I'm gonna try and answer them to the best of my abilities. And hopefully they're not good answers, but you never know. Don't trust everything you hear on the internet, especially from some guy in a walk-in closet. Oh, bonus answers to which Surface Pro should you get? Never buy the Core i3. Almost completely useless. You'll grow out of it. It's slow. It's going to be frustrating. The Core i5 is pretty much good enough for most people, but the Core i7 is if you need some room to expand into it, if you want that extra power. So kind of a breakdown into which one you should buy. Just don't buy the Core i3. 